Let's take a look at the solutions from Derivative Boot Camp Day 1. This was done in class for most of you. And so when we look at this guy, the first question, how do we rewrite our expressions so that we can take derivatives? And what you need to do is get to the point where you recognize immediately whether you can rewrite them and what they look like. This guy stays the same. This one is really just a coefficient where the denominator has been brought in underneath of that x squared. This one, we want to rewrite that denominator. So when we bring him up, he becomes a negative exponent. All roots, when they're even, this guy has a power of 1. The index is 2, so you get x to the 1 half. This one is a combo. The negative 3 is the coefficient. This is x to the 1 half. Bring it up, it becomes a negative 1 half. And so let's quickly take a look at this chart where it says... Here, rewrite it if you can. If you can't, then just go ahead and take the derivative. This one looks just like the one we did up above. Pull it out front. Now take the derivative. The 3 comes down, so you get x squared. 3 times 5 is 15 over 6. This can be simplified, and you can simplify that as you go, or just leave it as this since it says do not simplify. Your online homework system is going to make you simplify it. This one can be rewritten because the variable's in the denominator, so bring it up and make the exponent negative. Now, derivative, negative 3 comes down. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Square root, power of 1, index of 2, becomes x to the 1 half. Take the derivative, 1 half comes down. 2 times 1 half is 1. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. You don't have to have this 1 here, and you really can write this as 1 over the square root of x if you want to. This one, the root's in the denominator, x to the 1 half. Bring it to the numerator, it becomes negative 1 half. Take the derivative, bring the negative half down, you get positive 5 over 2. Take 1 away, you get negative 3 halves, and that's it. These two can't be rewritten, and so the 2 comes along for the ride, e to the x, the derivative is e to that function of x. We keep the entire thing. Then we chain rule out the derivative of the exponent. For this one, the power function, you rewrite it as it is. You take the natural log of the base, rewrite it as it is, chain rule out the exponent. It does not matter if this is at the beginning or at the end, but if it's at the beginning, you really should put parentheses around what's inside that logarithm. For the next set, you do have some questions you should consider, and then after you talk about them, go ahead and simplify each piece and then take the derivative. We'll go through one at a time. 5x to the fifth is the same, but this can be written as x to the one-half. Take the derivatives. You bring 5 down, 25x to the fourth. Bring the one-half down, negative three-halves x to the, subtract one to get negative one-half. Each of these has a coefficient that needs to be pulled out front, 5 6 and 6 fifths. You see them come out front. This one is x to the third. This guy, the x to the third's in the denominator, though, so you need to make it a negative exponent when you bring it up. Now take the derivative. The 3 comes down. You get x squared. 5 6 comes along for the ride. Yes, you can simplify this, but again, you don't have to simplify. Negative 3 comes down to give you positive 18 over 5 x to the negative 4, or like this, unsimplified. Now for these two, remember for this one, if you had 3 fifths plus 1 fifth, that's really 4 fifths, 3 plus 1 over 5. Well, you can break them apart, too. And if you break this guy apart, you get x to the 4th over x squared, 2 over x squared. This guy becomes x squared. This one, negative exponent. Now when you take each the derivative of each, you get 2x, negative 4x to the negative 3rd. So it's a little easier derivative if you can recognize that you can pull these apart. Now, if it's in the denominator where the sum is, you can't do that. Only when it's in the numerator. This one can't be simplified. We're going to take the derivative of this power function, natural log of the base, keep it like it is, chain rule out the derivative of that exponent, and then e to the 3x, you get e to the 3x as he is, and then chain rule out copy, I lost my parentheses. This is the chain rule of that exponent. 
When we look at the next page, you have some questions at the top. Again, you should look at and a little notation to remind you to watch your notation. Notation is the biggest reason you'll lose points. And remember, we're writing down notation because everything can mean something different. So you've got to label everything so we know what you're doing. Find an equation. So you put a box of a tangent line. Here's my function at this value, x equals 3. So we need the slope, we need the point, and we need an equation. The slope, calculus world, we're going to take the derivative. We're going to evaluate it at that value of x, and we get 54. That's our slope. Now we need a full point. They only give us x, so we got to go find the y. That's what's happening here, substituting it into the original function to get 354. Sure, these guys are the same, 54, 54. Coincidence, that's it. Find an equation, you're going to use the slope and the point, y equals mx plus b, down you go to get the b. Throw the numbers in, slope, 54, minus 108, the b that you found. The next question is similar, the derivative is a little different. So here the function, 3 to the square times square root of x, rewrite that. Still, slope, point, equation, slope, derivative, Substitute it in, and the, the tough part for some folks is what is 9 to the negative 1 half? Many people are using their calculator. If you can recognize what this is, you can do it very quickly so you don't make mistakes on your calculator. 9 to the negative 1 half is really 1 over square root of 9. Square root of 9 is just 3, so you get 3 6, which is 1 half. Here you're finding the point because we need both x and y value to find the equation. Here's what we're using. Substitute it in and off you go. The rest is the same as up above. Now when you're asked to find the points on the graph instead, then what I recommend that you do is make sure you read the question, right? So that you're not finding equations when all you have to do is find points. So I usually circle what I'm looking for and then I write the box and here I would put parentheses with a comma to remind myself. I always leave space because I might have a second point. Sometimes you have one, sometimes you have two. Sometimes you have more. Depends on the function, right? So to do that, we need it to have a slope of 4, so that means the derivative has to be 4. Set it e Find the derivative, set it equal to 4, you get x is 2. That means one point. That 2 can immediately be written here. And then what that tells you is you need the 4. How do you find the 4? Substitute it into the original equation, that 2. And when you do that, you get the 4. Now, you, typically someone will ask, why do I have 1 and sometimes I have 2 when it's a quadratic? Remember, you can have a coordinate plane. And on the coordinate plane, you can have a quadratic that hits the axis in two places. You can have a quadratic where it comes down like this guy, hits here at the origin and goes up, so it's vertex hit. But you can also have what we call a floater, who has imaginary roots and never touches the axis. And so just because it has an x squared doesn't mean you're going to get two points because you could have any of these uh, scenarios crossing it, touching it, giving it a kiss, floating. Let's look at the next example. We're looking for points again, and it's this graph has a slope of 3 16 Put a box, one set of parentheses because you don't know how many you'll get. The function, rewrite it with a negative exponent. That's what's happening here. Find the derivative, bring the negative 3 down. You get negative and negative is positive 3, x to the negative 4. Go ahead and rewrite it like this. It's going to be easier to solve because what you're setting it equal to is this 3 16 because we want a slope of 3 16 The derivative is 3 16 This derivative set it equal to 3 16 Okay. Now, you can cross-multiply when you do that. You get this, divide the 3's out to get x to the 4th equals 16. You're now taking the square root, the 4th root of each side, sorry, 4th root of each side. And what that's asking you is what times itself, 4 times, gives you 16. You can also enter this into your calculator. When you do that, it would be 16 raised to the 1 divided by 4 because that's how we change that to exponential notation, that root of a uh, fourth root with a power of 1 on the 16. Power of 1, index of the root. Type that in your calculator. What it's going to tell you is that x equals 2. But because this is an even index, we get plus or minus 2. 
That means we're going to have 2 and negative 2, so we need another parenthesis. That also means we have to go find the y's. Here's us finding the y's, and that's it. So that's it. I hope you're having a great day. Hope you're doing some math. Take care.